ended with me being a little puzzled that it did so well after playing one game. And so that was a little strange. So, um, so when I so I ran it and it and it won, I was like against the perfect agent. I thought that was really unusual. So then I looked at the table, and this is one of those things like you know, and this is the table. And if you notice, nothing really has learned other than the fact that we've seen these states. And there's one place here basically that says, you know, wait. Uh, taking three when you have state five, weight that really low. So t basically, take one or two. But you know you're you're done there. And if you happen to get to four, then then you uh, do that. So I was like, how is that possible? Well, it turns out that if you start with twenty uh, sticks, if you keep taking three, you get down to four. And then all you need to do is just learn one little bit, and then you can have a perfect game. So it turns out that the you know when when it was choosing the well, top choice. It was always choosing three, and it just happened that that uh, we started an initial state such that that was the optimum strategy. So it really didn't need to learn very much. Um, that's not great. So, and this is and this is, you know can can happen if it doesn't really see a, a wide variety of states. So let's go back up to the initial states for 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 uh, for uh, Nim, and instead of starting with twenty. I'm going to start with some random number between, say, 15 and 25. And so each time the game is played, it's going to have a different starting number of sticks, and that should solve that problem. Notice, even at best, that a perfect agent should, perfect versus perfect, uh, going first here should should win about 75% of the time and lose 25% of the time because there's one out of every four numbers is a bad one to start on. So, so just so so we're not going to look for perfect. Uh, right. So, so we do this, we run it again, and uh, yes, now we're losing. So that's so 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 that's good. And uh, and I could look at the table if I really wanted to. So in this case, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get get. Get rid of this. Now let's uh, play a few more games, um, uh, and so we're going to play a few uh, a few games. I'm going to change the number of games to be like a thousand. I'm going to turn off the display so I don't get to see all the you know this person moved, that person moved, and so on. Um, and also at the at the end, I'm going to. Um, just like with with them, I'm going to remember the uh, um, Q agent dot Q table um, and save it in the Q data data table. Um, run that, and then after about a thousand games, we notice we're 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 winning quite a lot more, and we have a much more kind of learned learn the table. Uh, I'll, I'll run it one more thousand games and and and, uh, and we, we have that. Now I would have expected us to be doing better here but we also have to realize that that 10 percent of the moves because the epsilon is 0.1 are random which we only really want when we're learning. So so we've learned a, a little bit so so uh, uh, so before learning Let's do this. So while learning, set epsilon to 0 0.1. So I'll do that q agent dot epsilon is equal to 0 0.1. Um, and that's what we've been doing. Um, however, when we are when we want to see how good it is, when we want to see how good it really is, turn off epsilon. So no random moves. Okay, and so we're gonna what's this here? And we're gonna turn off turn off epsilon and then see how it does. And now it's winning the proper percentage amount of time. Essentially, it's winning three quarters of the time against the uh, uh, the, the agent and, and, and so on. If I wanted to shut off learning altogether, I would actually set uh, um, uh, alpha to be zero as well. So that way, it, it, that's that's frozen. So that gets that gets the uh, uh, and this is playing against the, the the perfect the perfect agent. Now, if I want to instead, can I? Q 
cue agent play against another. And that's certainly the case. So we can we can go we can go up here. I'm gonna just yeah, I'm gonna steal the cue agent uh, uh, code. We'll have we'll call this Q we'll call Q1 and it's given the same move, the Q1 agent parameters, and we're gonna save it in a different file. Okay? And we can do the the same thing for for Q2. And save that into a uh, in, in, into a file, and then the only other thing we need to, to to do then is to have them play themselves. So during learning, I'm going to set the epsilons to point one. I'm going to go back and remember these uh, Q1 data, Q2 data, and Q1 agent versus Q2 agent. And so we're going to run these guys, run a thousand games, and then they will. Uh, um, um, and then I, and then we'll do that, and run it a few, you know, a few thousand times, and then we can do, we can pit them against other agents. So let's shut off the, um, um, let's shut off both the, um, the random moves and the learning. So that way the, these things are not going to learn anymore. They're, they'll be frozen. Um, I'm not going to bother resaving uh, uh, them at this, at, at, at this point because I'm not learning. But I can do things like put, put Q1 against the perfect agent for a thousand moves. And it wins a lot. And I can do the same thing for what happens if I put, notice Q2 has been trained as the second move agent. Um, and so I'll do that. It's going to lose a lot more, but it will win, uh, you know, 20% of the time, uh, which is pretty much, you know, right on, right on frame. If, if, if we, you know, for instance, compare this to a random agent, um, you know, notice that the random agent moves a, a, a lot more. So we can so we can do that, and we can look at the individual tables. Uh, uh, Q1 agent Q uh, gives me the, uh, um, the the full table, and we can and we can do the uh, um, and, and we can do that, and and, uh, um, and and so on. Okay.